Hi everyone, so this is my final 2020 presidential election prediction between Donald Trump running as the Republican, Joe Biden running on the Democratic ticket. So, this is it. This is it. It all comes down to this. Donald Trump and Joe Biden right now head to head 2020 election all the primaries all the polls all the coverage it all comes down to this map and this night 538 undecided electoral votes right now donald trump zero joe biden zero right now i'm very excited to see what this night has for in store for us and um i mean let's just see what happens i mean right now biden's looking very very uh good to win this election but you never know you never know i had pro said joe biden would win the election about a month ago um i had projected that so i'm still confident biden's gonna win uh 538 currently has trump as a 10 percent chance to win the election so this is this is pretty much the ball game this map uh let's go ahead and fill in the safe states for the last time here on this electoral map this is the final 2020 prediction washington oregon california hawaii new mexico uh illinois uh, vermont massachusetts rhode island connecticut new jersey delaware maryland district of columbia new york the first district in the state of maine and I believe that's it. That's 188 safe electoral votes for Joe Biden. What are the safe electoral votes for? And I should clarify, safe means I think they're going to win by over 15% in that particular area. Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, uh, Montana is uh, maybe 14%, but it will probably be 15% or more on election night. North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, most of it. Uh, Kansas, Kansas and Montana, I'm going to move to likely, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri is likely, uh, Mississippi, probably safe Republican, Tennessee, Kentucky, sorry about that, um, Kentucky, and I believe that is it, so, uh, oh, and West Virginia, so this I mean, this is it. This is it. Uh, right now, we have 104 for Donald Trump, 188 for Joe Biden, 246 votes as a toss-up. Let's go ahead and fill in Alaska as a likely Republican state because it's probably going to go that way. South Carolina also likely to go towards the Republican, the Republicans. Joe Biden likely in Virginia. Uh, Colorado's slightly interesting. Um, Hispanic numbers for Biden are slightly down, so I'm going to move it into the likely Democratic column just to be safe. Uh, 210 electoral votes for Joe Biden, 116 for Donald Trump. Where can Trump make up, oh, my apologies, Alabama, obviously going to the Republicans. So, 125 for Donald Trump, 210 for Joe Biden. Where can Trump, you know, start to make up some of this math? Well, right now, at this point... It is looking as though Iowa is going to go to Trump. Right now, there was a, there was a brand new Seltzer & Co. poll that just came out that showed Trump was a plus seven in Iowa. Not going to say he's going to win by seven, but it is seeming to be that momentum's shifting away from Joe Biden in the state of Iowa. And there could even be some momentum shifting towards Trump in these last, uh, in these last 12 hours or so. But Iowa... We're going to lean it over to Trump. Um, in the, what's the next state we should do? Let's go ahead and fill in some Joe Biden states. Right now, we project Nevada leaning towards Biden. Again, Nevada, uh, kind of an interesting state. Uh, the union sector has been hit hard. I wouldn't be surprised uh, if it was safe for Biden. I also wouldn't be surprised if it was really close. But Joe Biden, we're now projecting leaning in the state of Nevada to go to him. Uh, Maine at large is safe for Joe Biden, obviously. Uh, what's the next state we can do? Um, let's go ahead and do the state of Minnesota. The Trump campaign had really put a lot of stock in Minnesota and they had really hoped. But right now... It does seem that Biden is slightly favored in the state of Minnesota, so we're giving that one over to him. 
um, these two districts, we're actually going to be leaning these both over to Joe Biden. We think he's going to be favored, especially in the, the Omaha district. This is a district that only very narrowly went to Trump. It went Obama one time, I believe, maybe two times. I'm not exactly sure. Um, possible in 2012, but definitely went to him in 20, 2008. Uh, and I think it's going to go to Joe Biden again. He's gained strength in the suburbs. I think that definitely could be an area that uh, that he wins. Maine's second district, they're using ranked choice voting now, helping the Democrats. Uh, in 2018, they elected a new Democratic congressman, Jared Golden, who's looking like he's going to win his re-election as well. But again, it could be tight. So Maine's second district, we're going to project Joe Biden, the winner there. Uh, the state of New Hampshire, this one is safe for Joe Biden. Apologies, I did not fill that in earlier. Uh, if it's going to let me fill it in, that's the that's the question. Uh, ah, there we go, lovely. So, not for Trump, but for Biden. Uh, likely to go to him. So, this is it, you know. This is what we've all been waiting for. And Pennsylvania, my apologies. Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, Florida, Texas, Arizona. I'm putting it all on the line, making calls in these states. Um, let's start in the upper Midwest. We're going to project Wisconsin and Michigan both leaning towards Biden less than 5%. And the real the real reason for these calls is that he's just been really strong in the polling. He's been plus 7, plus 8. And I know I can already see the comment being tapped. You know, Hillary Clinton was plus 7 or plus 6, I believe, in Wisconsin on election day. However, the pollsters, I believe, have accounted for their error. And it also seems that the polling is much more consistently pro-Biden uh, across the Midwest. Whereas if you if you saw in like 2016, for example, uh, you saw Hillary Clinton like kind of having some leads, you know, or having some downs in Ohio. And Trump ended up carrying that state by like 7%. Uh, whereas, whereas now that's a tie. So... I think it's more uniform across the Midwest and therefore I'm able to comfortably project those two states into the Joe Biden category. Uh, state of Pennsylvania, that's a really key one. We're going to come back to that. Ohio, some, some, you know, some Democrats had hoped Ohio, maybe, maybe. But given, if it's a landslide, you could I could see Ohio going to um, Biden. But... Right now, it's basically a jump ball in terms of the polling. So we are going to lean it towards Trump because, again, in the Midwest, you know, funny things can go on. I'm, I do feel that, just a hunch, I do feel Trump's probably slightly favoured in Ohio. But the fact that we're even talking about Ohio really just shows uh, how good this landscape is for Joe Biden right now. Uh, state of Pennsylvania... Uh, we're going to lean this towards the Democrats again. It's looking, it's looking like maybe there's the teeniest bit of tightening, but overall, not really much is going on, and it still looks like Democrats are slightly favoured, and that puts Joe Biden over the edge. And now we have these Sun Belt states to deal with. So Arizona, man, has this one been a wild ride? It's been up and down a bit. And, but for the first time in the real clip politics average, Trump has narrowly taken the lead, I believe, of uh, I believe of Saturday morning before the election. Trump took the lead. Biden may have taken it back. But Arizona, this one really, this one, I, I do have a hunch it's going to go to Biden. But again, I would not be surprised if Trump won this one. Arizona is very close. So Arizona, I'm projecting, goes to Joe Biden. We're going to come back to Texas because um, I'll get to that in a bit. North Carolina. North Carolina is another very interesting state. Right now, the polling seems... Excuse me. It seems pretty good for Biden. But again, you know, Hillary Clinton was up by a similar margin in 2016 and Trump ended up winning the state, actually. So... Um, you just never know. But right now, given the polling landscape and the national dynamics, um, we're going to be ever so slightly leaning this in Joe Biden's favor. Georgia, uh, right now, again, 
this one is another really tight call right now. The momentum is clearly with the Democrats, but just given uh, the intrinsic advantage, I do think I have to uh, give the give the lean there over to the Republicans. So now we've got these two massive states here, Florida and Texas. Let's start with Florida. And uh, these two are probably the ones I'm most concerned about who I'm going to give. And I think I have the highest likelihood of getting these two wrong. Not that they're going to be close, but maybe I feel like maybe I'm missing something in these states. So let's start off with Florida, because I think that might be slightly easier than Texas. Right now in Florida, Joe Biden is ahead by 1.2 percentage points in the real clear politics average. That's his lead right now. I, I don't need to tell you that's not a very good lead for Joe Biden. And um, I'm, I feel like maybe I'm having second thoughts about Joe Biden um, projecting in my last prediction Biden would win the state of Florida just because Florida's just been such a such a hard state for Democrats. You know, in 2014, they were narrowly ahead in the... It was basically a jump ball for the governorship and the Senate race, and Republicans won both. In 2016, Hillary was narrowly ahead in the polling. Trump won it. In 2018, the two Democrats, Bill Nelson, Andrew Gillum, were pretty solidly ahead in the polling. And then Trump ended... Uh, and then um, both of those Republicans ended up getting on. And the other main thing is that um, the, the Cuban-American population seems to be moving towards Trump at a pretty big rate. At the same time, at the same time, early voting is looking pretty good for the Democrats in Florida, I want to say. Uh, the Miami vote numbers, though, are pretty concerning. And I think that really, at the end of the day, Florida... It's basically 50-50. It's basically 50-50 in Florida. It could go either way. It could go Trump. It could go Biden. We just don't know right now. There's so many competing data points to look at. And right now, even though the polling leans Biden, I'm, I'm really torn on who to give this state to in my final election prediction. But there may be, you know, there may be, if you talk, if you listen to Nate Silver, maybe some herding going on in the polls right now, uh, basically where the pollsters try to match all the other polls. And so given, and also the most recent polls are more Republican leaning. So maybe there's just some kind of like intrinsic uh, polling. Maybe Biden's really ahead by 2% or 2.5, in which case Biden should be feeling more comfortable. But Florida right now basically anyone's game. Trump could win or Biden could win. Right now, if, if, uh, if, if you really had to ask me, I would probably say 51-49 for Biden. But I mean, that could go either way. But just for the record, I will be putting Florida in for Biden. But again, could go either way. For the record, we'll be comparing it again. We'll be comparing the results against my prediction of tilt towards Biden. Texas, I have the opposite problem as Florida does. Texas, there's a lot of signs, like more qualitative signs, that uh, that Democrats, this really is the year Democrats could flip Texas blue. Right now, the polling, I believe, is Trump plus one or something. It's something really, really tight. Tight and polling error definitely could account for that. This is basically anyone's game. Same thing as Florida. This is jump ball. So right now, just based on its, because when you look at the factors favoring the Democrats, you have Democrats intrinsically performing better year to year, 2012 to 2016 to the 2018 Senate race, um, uh, performing better and. Um, and the early voting numbers are looking really, really good for the Democrats. More people in Texas have already voted than the number of ballots cast in 2016, which is absolutely crazy. And given that, I feel, you know, maybe this really is the year. And maybe I, I'm, I'm going to give Texas over to the Democrats at, by the same token. At the same time, you still have polling suggesting 
it's really, really tight. But the Republicans look like they're ever so slightly hanging on. And really, for that reason, I'm going to tilt it towards the Republican. But just as a warning, Texas, Florida, these two, there's a lot of qualitative data coming my way to suggest Florida could be going to the GOP and Texas to the Democrats. At the same time, there's a lot of more polling-based data that suggests it's anyone's game. This, Both of these, definitely, I would not be surprised at all if they went the opposite way to my predictions. But for the record, I've got them. Texas for Trump, Florida for Biden. So that's it for today's final election night prediction. Uh, thank you guys for watching so much. And uh, I'll see you on the other side of the election night. I'll be bringing you, I'll be bringing you live updates. Um, I'll be bringing you live updates, I believe, uh, towards the end of election night. Uh, possibly around 3, I want to say 3 a.m. Eastern, which we may know the results. In which case, I'll bring that to you guys, um, 3 a.m. Eastern. And then, obviously, again you know, throughout the, throughout after that. And as soon as there's a winner projected or as soon as we have a really good idea who's going to win, I'll be bringing that to you guys live as it happens. So that's it for today's video, guys. Thank you. Uh, thank you for everything. And, uh, and thank you for 500 subscribers as well. Uh, it's been a really great, um, great situation we've had. That's it for today's video, guys. Thank you for watching. Get some sleep and good night.